Next news out of Malaysia. Not a single Muslim country is considered developed, Malaysia Prime Minister says. So there is a summit, the Kuala Lumpur summit going on right now. The Prime Minister gave his keynote address um, where he said, end quote, they are all weak and incapable of protecting the Muslim Ummah, even if it is their duty by their religion. Uh, he said, if we care to honestly address, assess our situation, we must admit that we and our religion have become the subject of much vilification and defamation. Um, so this summit, which is also attended by the Turkish president um, and and Iraq's president, I'm sorry, the Iranian president, um, they all sat and listened to this guy talk about what they can do to make their their Muslim countries be considered first world developed countries. I have a suggestion. Um, I have a suggestion. If you want your countries to develop faster, get rid of Islam. Stop being Islamic. That's the first step. But go on, Ellie. Sorry. Uh, well, he does. He does start to address. So he says, you know, well, it's great actually that a lot of their um, their citizens are willing to die for their religion and die for. Our, Muslims, uh, it's bad that, that they're being associated with terrorism um, and that they need to start to work out, work at that because Islam being equated to terrorism uh, isn't going to help anything and that they mm. do need to look at things realistically. They absolutely need to look at things realistically. These are his words for anyone takes this as me um, being Islamophobic. Uh, he says that that um, a lot of the criticisms that they get, you know, have to be addressed. They have to address why, even with all of their money, um, they still struggle in a lot of aspects of running a nation. He said a lot of leaders are um, too authoritarian. They are too um, villainous. And so, you know, we need to start to reach a balance. And I think that a lot of what he said was important um, for a lot of them to hear. I mean, okay, so first of all, why is he even saying that? Isn't Malaysia considered a developed country? I mean, um, somebody in the live chat also pointed out uh, uh, Qatar, or Qatar, the English version, or United Arab Emirates, are they not considered developed countries? So, um, is he maybe talking just about the image in the West, in the, some, in the rest of the world? I don't know. What, because a lot of people consider Malaysia a develop, uh, developed country, so I don't know, understand. What. I don't know what criteria, like what, you know, absolute point criteria. I know that every time here in the U.S. when we're talking about universal health care, we're talking about education, we're talking about things like that, and they show us our list of where we fit in with other um, developed countries. Those countries are never on the list. So I don't know what the criteria is to become a, uh, hmm. to be considered a developed country. Right. Um, universal so, criteria is needed. But, but why is this, well, I mean, you're the, okay, here's the one reason why you shouldn't be considered a, a developed country. Your prime minister is talking about promotion of religion, right? So what, this is a prime minister of a country and he's talking about, oh, Islam looks bad. We need to, uh, make Islam look better. You have no business sp talking about religion as a prime minister of a country. Like the fact that this is, you think this is your job as a prime minister, that's one reason why you shouldn't be considered a developed country, right? Uh, I mean, secularism is, you know, part of the m more developed uh, countries in the world, right? So, uh, why is this even your agenda? Why are you even talking about this? Let people, if, if, if you're not a preacher, you're a prime minister, you're not an imam. Why is, why are you making this your agenda? Okay. This is, um, these, these are countries that are trying to, Turkey and Malaysia and some other countries that are like trying to fight Islamophobia on a global scale. Like now they're putting some serious money, they're putting government money now. It used to be Saudi Arabia, now Turkey is really getting involved. Turkey is trying to also get the, uh, cr uh you know, uh, the crown away from Saudi Arabia being the leader of the Sunni world, right? Iran is considered the leader of the Shia world. Uh, from a geopolitical perspective, now Turkey is trying to become the leader of the Sunni world and take that. And this is the the fight 
fight against Islamophobia is just like a P PR front from what they're actually trying to do. They're trying to copy the way Iran is influencing all these Shia you know puppets all around the world to to further its influence they're trying to copy that model and they they do that by saying like oh we're just trying to uh, fight misinformation about islam you know in other way let's say like oh people associate islam with terrorism well because it is and uh, i mean the only way the only way to uh, disassociate islam with terrorism is to make an Islam that has nothing to do with the Quran, right? As long as as long as Islam has anything to do with the Quran, it, it is a, is a terrorist ideology, right? So speaking of the Quran, he does bring that up in one point where he talks about how far away they've gotten from the days, um, oh, yeah, sure. you know, where where they were scientific and all the science that you know is in the Quran. Um, and that they were leading the world in those areas, and now they're so far behind. You know, I, when I was in London, the, I went to the British Museum, and the Islamic part is com was completely funded, and all the all the items there were was from Malaysia. Right? They, that's how they're trying to uh, spread. Um, you know, trying to change the perspective on is Islam. Like in London, they completely expanded the Islamic section of the museum. And all the items there was sent from directly from Kuala Lumpur to London from Malaysia. Like that's how that's oh. how. So, um, but the interesting thing is that they could, you know, they they keep telling us that uh, what you know what pe groups like ISIS or Al Qaeda does has nothing to do with Islam. That you can't find any trace of that in Islamic ideology. And then they go ahead and remind people that the Arabs and the Persians used to be the center of as you know the scientific world and philosophy and poetry and art which they were which they were during the Abbasid period right but the, the more accurate thing to to say is that you can't find any trace of that in Islam right so what the, you know they were Muslim but they were they were doing science and philosophy in spite of being Muslim not because of being Muslim there's nothing in Islam that you could directly point to that made them want to do science. I mean, there, maybe if you play some gymnastics and some, you know, stretch the meaning of some verses and stuff, maybe you can. But there's nothing really directly like, oh, go do, go do scientific analysis and research and stuff like that, right? These were just, you know, empires when they become rich, they become, they become interested in science and philosophy and poetry and art. And the Arab Empire, the Arab, you know, when they became rich, that's what they started to do. So, but what the actions of ISIS and Al-Qaeda, those are actually the actions that you could directly find Quranic verses and Hadiths, right? So, they say like, oh, th yeah, the Muslims are doing this, but it has nothing to do with Islam, but... But then they point to the, when they were the, the, at the top of the world when it comes to science and art and philosophy, like, oh, look, th this is Islam. No, that's actually the action of Muslims that you can't find anything in Islam to support it. Um, let me see what the top comment is. Uh, Haykal is saying, perhaps if they focus on improving life instead of afterlife, maybe they might be better developed. Um... Mark is saying, emphasize education over religion and this will change. Um, by the way, just to be clear, I don't think that they're being dumb about this. They're actually being very strategic. This is, this is not because of, uh, you know, they're trying to, oh, our countries are not developed. We want people to have a better image of uh, Islam. This is, def this is an excuse for geo uh, geopolitical... As, you know reasons like these people are actually trying to find use Islam as a way to have people in countries where they are not present to be loyal to their countries again this is a very very effective strategy just because these people are dumb about their religious ideologies don't underestimate what the real intentions behind these PR moves are anyways India has that, by the way. India is doing that as well. India is doing that with all, because there's so many Indians all around the world, right? And Modi is now, for example, ch is trying to get a lot of people that are loyal to India outside of India. Eventually, this is going to, you know, you're going to be able to if, uh, change the way people vote or the pe way people lobby. Israel does this very effectively. Um, Iran does this very effectively. Uh, and I think Malaysia, Saudi Arabia, 
sucks at doing this tries to do this and failed many times and i think turkey and malaysia are now moving to make the same move atheists are under attack in many places if they were christians their voices would be heard if they were jews their voices would be heard if they were muslims their voices would be heard but they are atheists and not many seem to be listening let's make it difficult for them to ignore us we have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.